Some years back I was at a jam session with my grandfather, an old timer, wanted to have a look at my violin. After turning it this way and that, plucking a couple of strings, and tapping the back of it, he tipped it a bit so that the light would shine inside. Checking the label. I asked. Yeah, and the post, he said in a haunting voice as he handing it back to me. But you're missing something. What? I asked. The rattles, you're supposed to have a tail inside, make it sound better. I got one in mine, he said shaking his violin near my ear so I could hear. Almost clipping one of my ears with a string, sharp things they are, can even bring a bit of blood if they pop. I told a friend about this and that year for my birthday, there it was all wrapped up, the rattles of a rather large rattlesnake for my fiddle and me. One year a different friend had got me a silk scarf to wrap around my fiddle. He had traveled with the gypsies in Europe and told me of a legend, among the gypsies, that a silk scarf wrapped around a fiddle when it was put to bed for the night kept the evil spirits out of it. Now about those rattles is there a truth to this bit of folklore? There are many justifications for putting a rattlesnake's tail inside a violin. One is that because the rattlesnake lives in dry climates it is wont to be thirsty much of the time and will suck up all available moisture. The foggy Appalachians caused all sorts of trouble with the gut strings of years past. I tried them once at a gig and took them off after the first set. The finger fogs had grabbed hold of them and they just wouldn't stay in tune. Today's strings don't have the same problem, but what about bow hair? Would the thirsty spirit of the rattlesnake soak up the moisture that can flatten the hair to the stick on a humid night? Not that I noticed, and that tail sat in its coffin for several years. Note, I said the coffin, not the violin. Then somehow it ended up in my violin. From Texas comes the belief that a rattlesnake's rattle will ward off mice and rodents. In Texas many times a fiddle was hung on the wall of the barn ready to go if the urge to dance hit the workers all of a sudden. Any mouse eyeing a fiddle as a good place to set up housekeeping was scared off by the smell of the rattlesnake even if it is was just its tail. Snakes eat mice. Mouse smells snake. Mouse looks for another place to call home. In Texas if a silk scarf is hard to come by, a rattler's rattle will also serve to ward off any bad spirits. Some folks in the Appalachians believe that the rattle of the tail will make the music sweeter. Mind you. This belief was here long before the existence of fancy systems that could enhance the sound of a violin by tinkering with a wire and a bunch of knobs. It's a whole lot easier to just drop a rattle in a fiddle anyways. In North Carolina there is another belief that because the fiddle is by nature a feminine instrument, which is another belief altogether, the introduction of a snake's tail made it masculine, or manlier. For any of you that think I am making this up, this came from a very old women way back up in the woods. One day when I was sitting out back on the swing, playing away with the violin tucked under my chin, right up close to my face, a big black bug crawled out of the F hole. It was an ant, but it could have been a spider. Spiders like ants don't they? Another bit of the legend says that if you put a snake's rattle inside the fiddle it will chase away the spiders. The constant swishing motion of the tail in the fiddle works like a mini dust mop and keeps the cobwebs from building up. Truth, well I have no idea, does get dusty in that little place, so many thing, words, sounds, and even a few old lies. The rattlesnake's rattler sat in violin case for years, until I got rid of it the violin, see there was some bad memories attached to that thing, some of you might ask why I might be bringing up the topic. Well my friends, there is an east wind coming and our violinist wears a top hat and dons a gas mask. The soul of the rattlesnake served its time well. Kids loved looking at it and hearing the rattle, jumping back and bravely stepping up to have it placed in their hands, the same with parents none had any idea how many lives that snake took, or even really cared. A rattlesnake kills for food, fear, and fun. Would you play with a man that swings in a hangman's noose?
At times it seemed that this was the highlight of any show and tell about the violin session. It wasn't until just this year the devil called for another violinist, and our story was born. There was one night I sat down to play and my violin the sound wasn't right. It was high, tinny, maybe even like metal, it was hard to describe, but it just didn't sound so pretty. It could have been a change in the weather. It could have been me. Not wishing to wait for the winds to blow from another direction I thought to go for the quick fix, Snake's tail in the violin will make it sound sweeter, or so I'd heard. Out of the case it came and into the fiddle it went. I just poked it through the F hole then gave the fiddle a good shake. Cool I thought it rattled, it danced around inside, the damn thing had become alive. Maybe it was just my imagination but after a few turns of a reel and jag of a jig, the voice did seem to clear up, kind of like it cleared its throat and she was ready to scream. A few days later I took the violin and gave it a couple of shakes, as a way of showing a buddy of mine that yes, indeed, there was a rattlesnake's tail inside. There was also a great big ball of dust, fuzz, cobwebs, and who knows what else all gathered up in a neat clump ready to pluck out with a pair of tweezers. It's not often we think to dust inside our violins when we dust the outside and as the years pass it stands to reason that things can collect inside. My reaction, well, I'll be darned. There might just be some truth to the tale after all. When you're alive and feel good you do clean yourself up, don't you? Look for the east wind my friends. Stay paranoid.